Okay, and we are live. Hello. Hello to Jane Yolen. Hello to Hetty Stemple. Hi. Um, you know, I, I sometimes I wonder if there's a God above or, or beside. And then uh, these miracles happen in my life, um, one, of, one of which is uh, not only being able to interview both you remarkable authors and human beings, but actually to have met each of you on various uh, occasions. So um, welcome to Jane Yolen. Um, Jane, uh, you have um, been called the Hans Christian Andersen uh, of, uh, of 20th century uh, children's literature. Um, you've also been called the big thing by the driver who took me to highlights where I uh, met <laughs> Heidi Temple for the second time. Um, and um, you are you are royalty. Um, uh, book number 439, and maybe it's 438 and 440, but you know, who cares? Yeah. Um, who's, who's counting? Who, who's counting? Who's counting? And uh, Heidi Stemple, who was my mentor recently at Highlights, uh, incredible author, and who just happens to be your daughter. We are really... Okay. I I want to I want to correct you a little bit. She we she may have been called the Hans Christian Hans Christian Anderson, but we in our family say no. It's the Hans Jewish Anderson. <laughs> I do. I always say that. Yeah, correct me away. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm here to be corrected. You know, for the next forty five minutes, you can correct me. Oh, oh, as oh. much. Very as dangerous. Much. Very dangerous. No, very dangerous. <laughs> well, they, we've been trying to manage to get together, Mel, for this interview for a while. And when we were together in at Highlights for the PJ Library summer camp, which is always the best time, we decided it would be great to get together right now for an interview because we have our new book out. Yes. So we happen to be celebrating a book of celebration of celebration. Um, a few words about your book together. All right, so we celebrate the light. I'm, I'm moving it because look at how wonderfully it picks up the light, which I think is so fun. Um, our editor for the book we did a couple years ago, I Am the Storm, contacted us. It also has wonderful movement on it. It actually looks like the Northern Lights, doesn't it, when I move it around? She contacted the two of us and said, I need to talk to you about a possible book. And and what do we always say, JY, when somebody asks us for a book? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll do that. Yes. We can. Hey, Heidi, you don't get to 439 books by saying no. <laughs> that well, is it's I actually I'm think I'm beginning to to at 85 uh, lose the ability to come up with new things. It's wonderful that I have editors who say, oh, I really would love to have a book uh, about X, Y, or Z. And I go, I'm there. Yep. And so but, but I, I, we're going to get sidetracked, Heidi. There, there's no other uh, alternative here. So we're going so Jane, to get sidetracked. You know, I, I, well, I used to be a scientist. I wrote maybe 120 scientific papers, and I don't remember all of them. And I'm thinking 439 books. Do you ever start to write a book and then say, oy vey, this was book 211. I've done that already. Yes, <laughs> but more often, um, because Heidi has a wonderful, keeps a wonderful um, alphabet of all, all my short stories, my poems, my songs. <laughs> um, without her, I would be lost half the time. Luckily, wow. we have a, a, a very a good... Um, uh, large book book room um that everything is in alpha one one copy of every book is in, in alphabetical order but without that sometimes i will say heidi did i really write this or somebody will ask me a question about a book i wrote and i go did i write that <laughs> that's why she calls me her external hard drive i am okay, the hi, institutional hi. memory of this <laughs> this Writing and, and, and 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 we quickly segue back to our celebration of your celebratory book, I love which, it. which is I love which it. is which is bashert because it just happens 
to be out last week when we scheduled our meeting. Yeah. I, I, and, and, okay. So in the story, our amazing, um, amazing editor who we just, we just love um, and jump to any opportunity she, she hands us. She said, uh, this is who, Cecily, who, is, who is she? Cecily Kaiser. And she works for rise is her imprint at Pen penguin random house. And she said, we need a holiday book. But we wanted to think really deeply about what a Rise holiday book would look like. And she said, it, it's got to be inclusive. Um, we are three Jewish creators, Cecily and the two of us. We, we want Hanukkah to be included, but we also want, we want all the winter holidays. And I said, okay, all? Okay, sure. Yes, we're doing that. And we talked about what it would look like. Um, and in the end, we did spread past the winter. We sort of went from sort of from solstice to solstice, right? <laughs> like when when the light starts fading and when the light starts coming back. Because what what she said, run with it. And the two of us got together, my mom and I, and we said, what what would this book look like? And we both decided it had to start with light because we wanted to start when the light started fading. And we wanted to come back when the light came back, but we wanted to celebrate not what makes the holidays different. We focused really quickly on the things that connect all of us, because I think we think a lot that that religion and holidays can really divide us because they are the core is different. But when we sort of focused out from the core of the holidays. Now the core of each of the holidays in the book and there are seven are in the book, in the back matter. But when you focus out, we started just sort of brainstorming the two of us and thought, okay, we start with light, but what else are the similarities? What is at the heart of these when we're not talking about the, the actual reason for the holiday, but we're talking about the human part of it, light, tradition, family, great meals, hope, loss, all those things, and always coming back to the light. So in the book that we created, those are the things that are highlighted. And it is a poem, which we're both poets. So it it really lent to that. I, I think um, for, for, go ahead, me, for me, as we were researching lines of poetry, not other people's lines of poetry, but lines of my own poetry, a poetry that... Heidi kept adding to we're coming coming forward because if you think about all those holidays, so many of them are built not just on the light, but the the idea of everyone coming together, everyone in the family, everyone on the street, everyone uh, in your child's school, everyone in um uh, the 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 elders who are still alive the elders who are not alive it's still all there and it just it's you might not read it as a poem but in our minds it is very poetic it'd be hard not to read it as a poem i think mel would you like me to read just the beginning i, I i'm i'm dying for you to read the, just the beginning and more and to show the gorgeous pictures and to talk about them for a few minutes. Oh, uh, but, I, yes. but, th but then we want to go back. I want to be a fly on the wall. I want you to run me through the process of how you and Jane um, get together. Is it over coffee and strudel? What is, the, what is the process whereby you've written 20 books together? Go ahead. Let, we'll me, let me start with the beginning of the book because we're talking about how it's a poem. So I want to show, and then I want to talk about Jay Ting's art as well. So it, it starts and... The interesting thing is we laid in the art afterwards. So in the text, none of the seven holidays are mentioned. And in fact, the text could be about each holiday. Every page could be about each holiday, but each holiday has its own art spread too. Here's Diwali. When the days get shorter and the night sneaks in early, we celebrate the light. It has just a little bit about the actual holiday that's depicted in the art. I always forget how hard they are to turn. When we gather together, we celebrate 
family. When we tell our stories and sing our songs, we celebrate the earth's turning. So you see, it really is a poem and it goes it goes through in that way. Now you wanted us to talk about our process. Now, there's another lovely thing there, the, the bottom matter. The, the, the individual holidays are uh, written about in the bottom so they don't interfere with the artwork, they don't interfere with the poem. Uh, it's really lovely. Right, so here, it's always it's an inter it's a it's an invitation to dip back into the book. So here you see on the corner it says winter solstice. And on the next page, it just gives one line about what winter solstice is, and that's on each of them. And then in the back, turning pages live is always mm -hmm. fun. In the back, there's actually more information on each of the holidays. Show us Hanukkah. We're Jewish, show us Hanukkah. Show us Hanukkah. Now, one of the things that was very important to us was to also make sure that all of the families were as, as diverse as possible. We have families of all different, um, of all different nationalities, all different races, all different ethnicities, all different ages, all different abilities. Um, well, here's Hanukkah. That's lovely. And and your and your wonderful illustrator. Uh, oh, J Ting Chen. Let's see here on the on the art uh, in the art when they when Cecily came to us about art. We had a Zoom call and she said they they were trying to figure out what the word to describe the artist, which I love how they do this. They they said we'd like to come up with one word that will describe what we want this book to look like. And then we'll find an illustrator that can do that. And the word was luminous. And I, I think they, they nailed it on the head, right? Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Look here. Isn't it wonderful? And I was reading up now. I don't, everybody should know this. We don't, we didn't choose the artist and we are not as involved in the art um, as people think we are. And we've had various different different types of things about this, but I did the the back matter and the the um, the marginalia in this book. And Cecily asked me to create vignettes for it to write the art notes for this, which is not normal, but I did that. And then Jay Ting is an illustrator who is, I believe, she's New York based. I was just looking at mm -hmm. interviews with her because I'm absolutely fascinated. She just illustrated a gorgeous book um, about a peach. And I can't remember the whole name of it for Lee Wind. Stunning. And she has so many styles. Um, but she came over from China to the United States to study as an adult. So she she has a wonderful cross-cultural sensibility to her, which I really loved, that I, I felt like really came through in the art. Um, so I think we're all sort of mix up of, of you know, uh, different religions, different, different sensibilities, different knowledge of different places in the world. And I hope that shows through in the book. Mel, you had mentioned and asked before, you know, how, you know, process, what is process? Heidi's in my process very often starts with us sitting across the dining room table at my house and talking to one another. So as if, as if we are, as we're talking, everything sort of rises to the top. Um, and children's books are meant to be, you know, these kinds of books are meant to be read aloud. And if you cannot read it aloud to your own daughter across your table, <laughs> then there's something wrong. You know, you have to go back and-, and uh... but, but Jane, I, I'm really intrigued. So like when you have this tete-a-tete -tete with Heidi across the dining room table, is there a, a story um, on, on the uh, agenda or it's just a kind of a schmooze? It depends which kind of book we're working on together. This book, because it had this, this, this particular book has individual chapters that are different, but the same in a sense. Um, other books we've worked on have been stories you know, that, that go on and on and on. Others have been book of poems. 
each time you work on a different kind of thing, your your responses are going to be different. Your needs, what you're looking for, are going to be different. But I always think back about teachers who pick up a book sometime in classroom. They've liked the book, but then they just start reading it aloud. You need to practice. Even even Heidi and I needed to practice when we're when we're reading a, a new book back and forth because what's in the what's in the ear and what's on the page can be very different. And what happens in schools very often is that teacher picks up a, a book and starts reading and what's missing from that from what they're doing is performance. They can they can read the book, but they can't perform it without having spent a little time with it. So, so to what extent do you think that a picture book is actually a play? I think it's a combination of a play and a poem. Um, and and Heidi and I have done both. Um, <laughs> she has she has a, a new book coming out. She's doing a series of books that are called Little Janie Books. And it's really about my wait, life. Wait. One. I have one. It's not a series. Yet. Yet. Okay. Yes. Yet. Yes. Yet. Yet. Um, but but what too many writers forget, especially for children, is what's in the ear. And I know Heidi is really good at that because she reads things aloud all the time. She reads them. Um, she has in, in the car. She has she 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 listens to to stories in the car. She um, when she teaches, much of how she teaches is story. Um, uh, what she teaches is story. So uh, I think that that's for us sitting across the table is when. I'm listening to her version of the story. She's listening to my version of the story. And together we find the story that we want. Incredible. Who is the scribe? Who uh, says, oh, 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 me. oh, oh, I got to get that down. I got to get that down. Me. <laughs> That's because me. Because she can type. I never, I never learned to type properly. I type you with all my you, fingers. You, you type it or will you pencil it? Mm, mostly type it. But I will, I will also, because you can't read my mom's handwriting. And... <laughs> Yeah, you can't read my typewriting. I was told by the, <laughs> by the, the, the teacher in, in, in my high school, you don't want to learn typing, she said. You want to be the boss, not the secretary. So I never learned. Wow. Not real typing. I still type like this. So, so Jane, a lot of so, so these books are kind of like a tete-a-tete -tete in the true sense of the word. Um, sitting over what coffee, uh, tea, tea. Uh, what? always tea, 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 oh, tea. and uh, Heidi busy with her laptop writing things down. Yeah, and then or, or, or correcting my spelling. <laughs> I'm not correcting anyone's spelling, Mel. We and then once we've sort of and and it doesn't always happen face to face. Often we're in different places, and that's then we just do it over the phone. Now over Zoom, we love to to make sure we're, we're in touch practically every day, I think. Um, but then we start sending it back and forth. Someone will start often. That's often we start out loud with each other. What do you think about this? I think it should be about this. What about we celebrate the light? Yeah, that. And so someone will start it and then send it on. And then we, the thing about being family is that we trust each other implicitly. We almost have a shorthand about it. You've had a critique with me, Mel. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. We, as a critiquer, as a teacher, I always believe in being as generous and kind and pulling all the things you love about it and then giving critique and then reminding how much, what, how you responded to it, how, how, what were the best parts of it? In our shorthand, we don't necessarily do that. I will say that's not good. 
I don't like that. We're not doing that. And she'll say, oh no, we're doing that because this is the way it's going to be. And we, and this is a good line because, and so we have a little bit of a shorthand, which anybody listening in might be think, oh no, why are they speaking to themselves like that? But because we have such a long tail of history doing this together, um, we trust each other and we know everything is done with love. Um, we joke a lot that I will say to her, oh, no, no, you you would never let me get away with that. And she, she oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, but so a you know, lot one, of- One second, you don't argue, mother and daughter. They we argue, argue, we argue completely. It's, it's, it's <laughs> often like a, like a bloody battle over the words, but- but for us, we know that it's okay because the next line will be, you're dri driving me to so-and-so or wait, what is the, what is, what are we doing on Saturday together? So it's, it's, we have that shorthand where it may not seem as nice <laughs> as other people's critiques, but then we pass it back and forth and we revise each other's words and then forward it. Um, may a lot of uh, I'm often moving things around this way and and uh, and the book came together the poem that it became the book came together pretty quickly then there was a lot of tweaking after that and I have to say I went back recently into the early early drafts and we started by naming the holidays in the text being very specific about it so the first page originally looked like um, we celebrate the light, the light that lasted eight days, the the light that shone above a tiny baby, the light that is brought into our homes. The and and so really digging into each holiday, and what we found was when we pulled that out and left the holidays out of it, and just in the art that it really it really showed the cohesiveness, the, the connectivity between and then, humans. And, and then the title becomes so perfect. Yeah, the title was, the title we're was not, we're not we're, we're not celebrating the holidays, we're celebrating the light. Yeah. Um, gorgeous. So um, Jane, I want to go back with you now. Um, even though you cannot type, you wrote your, your first uh, children's book when you were in diapers practically. Oh God, I hope I was out of diapers by then. But <laughs> sorry. I was being I was being figurative. No, figurative. No, you, you practically were right though, because I I wrote my first little story when I was um still in in uh, lower school. You know. It wasn't published. But you were a published author when you were twenty two. Twenty two was the first time that I was published was not published under my name because it was a book my father wanted to say he had written. So my first book that was published was really uh, uh, says written by, <laughs> by my father. Um, but, but, um, and, and he, he took it and showed it to people as his book that he wrote. Um, he did pay me something for it. <laughs> oh, did, 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 did you guys ever work this out because there's some unfinished business here? I'm sensing. <laughs> oh, they did not. No. Well, that was said, what did he say to you about poetry? It, it, you can't make a living in poetry. Yes, I write the dinosaur <laughs> books <laughs> are making a lot of money and they're all wrong. So, so your first, your first uh, stolen uh, children's book when you were twenty-two, um, and then since then you've had a, a tremendous, illustrious uh, career. I'm just going to mention uh, Our Moon, but there's hundreds of others. Um, and uh, it, it surprises and me all the time. And sometimes what surprises me are the books that don't get taken and the books that do. And uh, Our Moon was turned down by the first seven editors as too quiet and the eighth one bought it and said i was looking for a quiet book you know so who knows it's it's what i always tell my students is we have to do a lot of work we have to do a lot of um understanding of publishing because 
Publishing is really what it's about. It means to make public. You want to make your story public. Um, but for the editors and for the publishers, they want to make money. You know, they're there because if they don't make money on their books, they're not going to be publishers for very long. So, so for us, it's fun when somebody says, yes, I want that book. But it becomes, at some point in our lives, the, the business intrudes. And honestly, don't tell my publishers I said this, but I would be writing these books for nothing because I love to write. But it's a secret because otherwise, how am I going to eat, right? <laughs> um, uh, teach, Heidi does a lot of teaching. She does a lot of writing too. J Jane, I, I'm assuming our moon has gone into its 80th printing, but who's counting? So, um, you you know, between uh, between the uh, book when you were 22 that was stolen from you till now, uh, you've gotten a few royalties. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to go back now and 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 bring this. What, one of the uh, great mysteries of knowing both of you is that Heidi did not come uh, lightly into the uh, into the family business. She pushed back. She did everything not to be a writer. She was I don't know. She sold raspberries. Uh, she became a probation officer. Um, how did you or how did she uh, come back into orbit? I think so, we. Didn't we write a, a, a short story together? Yeah. Um, I, after, uh, during college, I interned both as a counselor at a, sh uh, at a group called Homicide Survivors Group. So I worked with friends and family uh, whose loved ones were murdered. I worked as a, as a, a counselor at a halfway house for delinquent um, boys, 14 to, to 18, all felony um, convicted. I worked as a probation parole officer and a private investigator. Um, and I was about to go back into, um, in, into the victim side of it. And I, I interviewed for and got a job at a battered women's shelter. And the day before that, between the interview and the call saying, I got the job, I found out I was pregnant. And I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, Madison, who is now 29. Um, I was very sick. So I had to turn down the job and I thought, well, let me just get over this for a little while. And, and, and my mom in that time sent me another, because she did it all the time, sent me an invitation. Hey, over, over a brand new email, email was just newly a thing. She wrote and said, someone would like me to write a story in a book called famous authors and their kids write spooky stories want to write it with me and of course I always said no I don't want to do that I don't want to join the family business I don't want I don't I, I have no intention of being a writer but this time I was so sick I was so sick of being home and being sick that I said yes so we wrote um, a story called daffodils together and what I learned in that was that I enjoyed writing I was good at writing and I liked writing with my mom James, so, so what, what I have hold to on tell a second you, I yeah, could James. not I could not have named that, that uh, if, if she had said, uh, uh, do you remember the name of our first story together? I would, I, I, I wouldn't have remembered. I remembered vaguely what it was about, but I, I, I couldn't have remembered the name. So. Well, th thank God for Heidi. So, so Jane, uh, did, was this premeditated? Like, were you trying to get Heidi to uh, take advantage? Oh, I was of, always trying to get her. <laughs> consider, considerable writing abilities. She she wrote in in college. Um, she wrote essays and she wrote other things. Um, it was Adam who was the one who wanted to be the writer of the family, and and in many ways he is the writer of the family. Absolutely. Um, and uh, he's always he writes, he writes and he's a prominent musician. And uh, for me, music is the language. So. Yeah, but he also writes mostly scary 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 dark uh uh horror stories which okay. i stay up at night reading like this with <laughs> lights on um because he's my son i'm gonna read you know i read everything heidi writes i read everything you know adam writes or jason or 
who, whoever in the family, right? Um, but, um, you know, Heidi resisted. And here so I when, am. <laughs> when, when she came back into the fold, how was it for you? I, I kept on wanting to find more and more things to write with. <laughs> You guys are incredible. Now now I'm going to embarrass myself. Um, Jane, I, I've gone over some of your interviews, so I wouldn't ask you the same questions. Um, and in one of them, you spoke for several minutes of the importance for writing dummy books, even if you're an author. Writing what books? Writing dummy books, making dummies. Uh, paginating. Dumb, paginating. Pag paginating the book, even if you're a, an author. Um, do you still paginate your picture books when you write them? I do. I do because put picture books need to be a certain, it's not an absolute, but need to be a certain thing because it has to do with pagination, how many pages you, you know, are usually how long a picture book is. Um, but I find now I can write the whole book and then paginate it. And I'm always on the picture book. I'm always right on the button. So, so my, but, it, but after four, 430 stories, you still paginate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's if they're incredible. picture books, not if they're novels. So, so I want, yeah, of course, I want to tell you a story now, which is kind of embarrassing for me. Um, so um, I, I actually teach the importance of paginating, creating dummy books, and I, I give lectures on it. And here I am at Highlights with my wonderful mentor, Heidi, and we're going over the manuscript that I prepared. <laughs> she looks at me, she says, Mel, did you, did you paginate it? I always paginate, but this one, I had an oy vey minute. I said, oy, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I have to do. <laughs> All, all of my students re watching this, listening to this are going to laugh because I am, I am, I am absolutely crazy about paginating. I think it is the one and, thing. And, 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 and me too. <laughs> but now they'll know you why I got, where I got you, it from. You cut me. <laughs> so, so here's, the, so I'm going to now make this a more general question. You know, um, people who have been in the industry and who have written for many years, they know the rules. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the rules and still, change. Sometimes the rules change. Okay, but we know we know more or less the current rules, and and, and we write. And and then when somebody reads the story to us, <laughs> there's this oy vey minute. We say, "Oh my goodness, I wrote that." Um, a few words about our not being able to um, to read our own material. Well, I've actually been to a lot of poetry readings where the poets. Are the should just hand the book on to somebody else to read because they're so bad at reading their poetry. It's as if, yeah, it's as, as if they have one eye open, one eye closed. Um, but with children's books, because you know they're going to be read aloud by a parent to the child, by a grandmother to a child, by a teacher to the children in the school, you know they're going to be read aloud. Um, if you can't read it aloud. How the world do you think <laughs> that book is going to do well out out in the world? Um, but Jane, do you ever um, like when you're writing now? Do you ever miss things that that, that Heidi will pick up a um, you know a um, an extra conjunction or adverb that doesn't need to be sure, there? Sure, sure. I, that's that's why we have revisions. If we could all write the book right the first time that would be both wonderful and awful <laughs> true you know wonderful because oh whew, i can get on to the next book but awful because look at all those things i did wrong so so well, hold on so you can write a first draft today your 441st book and still you will look at the draft and or heidi will look at the draft and say hmm Oh, that needs to be a lot better? Of course. Of course. It can always be a lot better. I was still revising Al Moon as it was going <laughs> to be printed. You know, that's that's part of the job. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Incredible. So now I want to segue to what you told me at the beginning before we went on the air, that this has been a uh, spectacular Jewish-themed book year for you. 
And I know that Heidi has also spoken about her recent uh, um, um, embracing uh, of Judaism over the past couple of years. A few words on that for both of you. Well, you want to start with some of the books you have out this year. I grabbed just a couple that I had in my in my office. These are these are my mom's books that she has out this year. Too many golems, which is just riotous. It's about a little boy, little boy who um, wants to learn how to speak, or has to learn how to to to, to read um, Hebrew in order to have his bar mitzvah, and. Uh, and he's having a terrible time at it. His father is a rabbi, and he's still having a terrible time at it. And so he finds a, a, a piece of paper with Hebrew letters on it, and he's trying to, to learn to read that so that maybe that'll be helpful. What he doesn't know is that it's a call to be helped by golems. And suddenly there's a big knock on the door, and he opens the door, and there are these 10 huge guys. Hey, who do you who do you want us to, to kill? Basically, and 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 he said, James, well, I, this is this is a new story. Yes, absolutely new. It's That's not brand new out this year. Where where do you get the ideas from? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Isn't this where, fabulous? Where, where, when when did this Oyve moment happen? Can, can you you can you remember when I, you get the ideas? I have been reading Golem stories. I love Golems. I just think they're wonderful. Um, there's really wonderful, beautiful novel, adult novel about a, a golem. And I, I can't remember. I, I do know who the per person is who writes it because I know her personally and I've lost her name. Um, but I, I, I always wanted to write a golem novel. And this is what came out. Who knew? Here, here's another one of your two. I'm just going to show these two. Too, too many golems to spoil the chicken soup. Yeah. <laughs> and they have the, man, the many problems of Rachel Leah. Wow. This is a family story. It was um, uh, one of my cousins, many times removed, who I didn't really even know, on the side, not the Yolan side, but my mother's side, who told me a family story about how in their shtetl, um, boys only were allowed to go to school. Boys only could... could um, study the the alphabet the alphabet um and she she meets by accident the um the rabbi on a walk in, in the park and she asks him why that is and, and he says well that's how that's how it's always been and she basically says well sometimes things can change and he's he he's sort of just like like that idea, but eventually he allows her to come first to watch through the window when the boys are in school and listen to see if she can make anything of it. And then when she does, he allows her to sit under his desk because he doesn't want any visitors who come in to know that there's a girl in the school. And she goes back and teaches all the girls and women uh, to teach, because she says, what about now we can read recipes. Now we can read stories. Now we can read uh, histories. Um, and and um, I did it because it was a family story. And now it turns out that the editor um, or the owner of the publishing company was probably one of my cousins on that side. <laughs> He's been doing research because he said, I heard something. A story like that, sort of. So incredible. Isn't that That's wonderful? Incredible. Wow. So, Heidi, has this somehow, because we talked about this um, mm -hmm. when I was in the States at Highlight, has this somehow impacted your, your career and your thinking um, about having this Jewish culture, this treasure that we perhaps don't? I, I mean, it happened to me, and I live in Israel. I came back from Highlights. And now I'm writing Jewish stories. It's crazy, right? <laughs> so what what, what what this is about you? What happened to you the past couple of years? So uh, I come from an incredibly mixed family, religion-wise. My dad was raised Catholic. Um, we, My mom was raised Jewish, but was pretty adamant about her spirituality. We so, sort of open. She raised us Quaker. I have... 
relatives who go to mass every week, every <laughs> several times a week. I have a rabbi in our family. Um, we have Cohen's who don't, who, you know, who are deeply religious. So for me, it's been very, it's been just a mixed bag. And I, I love, um, I love learning about all sorts of world religions and world cultures. And for me, I've always been extremely supportive of different groups and communities needing their creative community, not even just needing a community, but writers, creative people needing their community. Um, and, but I thought, well, my community is my family and my writer friends. And I started working, teaching writers um, almost apologetically. Well, I'm not that Jewish. Um, at summer camp at the, that we did, and I've taught four years in a row with them. And I think the, not this past year, but the year before, and a bit the year before that, but really um, in 2023, I started to really realize how changed I felt after being in a group of Jewish creative, mostly women, but not, not all women, obviously not. Um, so being surrounded by a community that was nourishing that part of me, which I had pretty much let languish. And I have stopped apologizing for being not Jewish enough. Um, I've started to um, actively look for community in a different way, which I love. I'm still not, uh, I'm, I'm still not practicing. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not focused in that way, but in the way of having that shared history uh has become very important to me. And, and I actually kind of like that it came later in my life. I mean, I'm 58 now. So this is in my, in my solidly mid fifties that I kind of found this, but it really not only supported the part of me that needed that community, it gave me less of an academic understanding of why people need community and more of a heart understanding of of why people need community and and I continue to support everyone's need for that and I, I find it I find it fascinating so I'm I'm always reaching out but I've sort of also realized I need to reach within as well and I I I found that a very interesting thing to learn in my mid fifties because <laughs> you know you kind of think maybe you're done having epiphanies about yourself. But that's not always the that's not always the case, and it's it's an interesting thing to learn. You know, it's, it's, inter it's interesting that concomitant with Jane's uh, resurgence as a uh, a uh, I'm almost going to say a Jewish children's writer. Well, but it's it's even more interesting than that. I um, in college I minored in religions because I was fascinated. What fascinated me was the stories actually that came. The, the the religions didn't come before the stories. The stories came before the religions and then were built out into bigger stories to support the religions. That's very interesting um, thing. Um, and, and as Heidi mentioned, uh, for a while I was a Quaker because that was the way you could be religious without being religious. <laughs> um, and, and then... One day, um, when I was sitting with an editor of mine, the editor, whose husband was a rabbi, um, and she said to me, I know you're Jewish. Why don't you ever write anything with a Jewish theme? And I said, I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I wasn't, grow I wasn't brought up Jewish. I was brought up in New York City, which is probably the same thing. Right. Jewish. Yeah, Jewish. Huh? Jew Jewish. Yes. Um, I mean, I went to cousins bar mitzvahs. Um, I um was going to schools that were taught by actually taught by people who had escaped from from uh the Germans um and had come to America, who had been high professors. Um, but they came and they they were teaching at a low uh, at a lower level because that's where the jobs were. But um, I was sitting with this one editor, and she looked at me and she said, 
I know you're Jewish, but why haven't you ever written anything about Ju you know Judaica of any kind? I said, because I don't know enough. I don't know enough. And she said, well, I want you to write me something Jewish. So I said, so, we, so, so we're sitting over, over lunch. Um, and I said, well, the thing that fascinates me, of course, is, is what happened during the Holocaust. Um, but that's not really children's stories. You know, that is really probably not. Um, and she said, tell me more. I said, well, maybe it would be interesting because I write fantasy and science fiction. Um, if a child went back in time to, to uh, I don't know, the Holocaust, a, 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 a child of this time going back in time to, to what she brings to the people who she sees and meets is already knowledge of what's ahead of them. Um, and she said, hmm, tell me more. We sat there for about another hour and I'm starting to make up what became Devil's Arithmetic. I, and then at the end, I said, no, I can't be done. She did, said- did, Sorry, Jane. Did, did you uh, anticipate that this was going to be perhaps your your major opus? No, no, no. I, I was just making stuff up as I went along. And she said, send me something <laughs> back home. And, you know, that was before we had computers, yeah. before we did all of that stuff. Um, and she would phone me almost every day saying, what have you written? Have you done anything yet? Can I see something? She became a real nudge. And to shut her up, literally to shut her up, I wrote the first part of the first chapter when the girl is at home and, 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 uh, um, the grandfather says some stuff and uh, she opens the door for what is supposed to be Elijah and finds herself back and I'm going I, I sent it to her and I said see it can't be done and she wrote and said I'm starting the, I'm starting the contract right now <laughs> incredible so um, one of the things that intrigues me is the choice of names you know Hannah who becomes Chaya uh, what's your Hebrew name Jane? I'm not sure I have one. <laughs> I think you have one. I have one. What's Can you guess what it is, Mel? Can you guess? Um, my name is on, on My name camera? is Heidi. My name is Heidi. The book is Hannah. Yeah. And what you are? Chaya. You are Chaya. The character is not me. The character is very much my mom, but the name is mine. Yeah. You can't write a yes. book. You can't write a book about a girl named Heidi. No, but I mean, this, uh, we, we've been talking about this transformation from a, a, a teeny bopper um, who doesn't want to hear about the Holocaust and who doesn't want, um, who gets kind of sucked into this uh, saga, which is like, um, yeah, yeah, in a sense, the, the, well, um, it was probably when, when, when Devil's Rhythmistic came out, it, it was probably only one of maybe 10 children's books ever written or written on uh, about the Holocaust and certainly the only one that had a child going back in time and it was the child going back in time that both had huge um, discussions about whether um, it was all right to do that whether it wasn't all right to do that at one point the the um, the editors um, I think husband, the rabbi, tried to convince her that it had, had to take that that part out. Um, and actually, I was asked by the editor whether I would leave out the, the going back in time. And I said, no, that's not what the story is. And then she had had the young editors come to talk to me on the phone about it. Um, and they all said, no, we love that. Um, maybe maybe you just need a sharper reason for going out and reason for getting coming back, and that's that's how I changed the the actual opening and the actual closing of the book. 
So I, I'm like an intermediate age. I'm going to be 73 next month. So I was born in 1951, six years after the end of the Holocaust, but in a very anti-Semitic country called Canada. And um, when, I, when I'm rereading or um, looking at your, at your book now, in this kind of fast forward time machine, it was written many years ago. And I'm thinking to myself, oy vey, uh, everybody has to read The Devil's uh, Arithmetic now. This is a book that um, has become critical again. That's yeah. Yeah. my thinking. Yeah. Here's, um, and, and, well, yeah, sorry, Jane. Here's the funny thing, is that when the book was made into um, a movie, um, television show, it won three Emmys. Guess who didn't win any of the Emmys? Me. <laughs> uh, you you, you won my Emmy, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> the Mel the Melamy. The Melamy. <laughs> Listen, um, you guys have you, you forgot that you have uh, planes to catch and boats to ride, and uh, I don't want to keep you from writing your next book. Uh, what I do I want is that I want Heidi to celebrate again and read another uh, a stanza from the beautiful the lyrical poem. And um, how about if I read the end? That would be true. I feel like it's filled with hope and we need hope, right? With beautiful art here by J. Tings Chen. When we go to bed after the feast, after the day of prayers and remembrance, after the celebration, we wake to a lighter day, a bigger heart, and a world that holds us together once again. We celebrate the light. It's a prayer. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to start crying in a minute. Um, I've been incredibly lucky um, to have met the both of you. Um, and uh, just as lucky to share this uh interview with two such luminary authors, poets, and, and human beings above all. Thank you, man. Uh, so, Jane Olin, the big thing, <laughs> <laughs> the Hans Jewish Anderson, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, and Heidi Stempel, um, good health to both of you, and uh, many, many more books uh, together apart, and um, and my prayer is that I uh, won't be too long before I can meet you guys again here or there. So um, I've been interviewing the incredible Jane Yolen and Heidi, Heidi Stempel on their brand new book from last week, We Celebrate the Light, um, which was illustrated by J.T. Chen and uh, published by Rise and Penguin Workshop. And it's gorgeous. Run out and get it. And... Uh, before I forget, I'm Mel Rosenberg, and I am the host of the Children's Literature Channel of the New Books Network, and how lucky I am. So a uh, happy Sukkot, and uh, Shana Tova, and uh, it's been wonderful. I... So much fun to you, too. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Thank Mel. Thank you. As they say in Hebrew, Toda. <laughs>